As you now know, there are an enormous number of considerations that are taken into account when designing a themed land. And it takes a large number of people from over a hundred different disciplines to create it. So with all these different people working together to create something that's never been built before, how do we make sure that everyone has a common understanding of the vision? Communicating complex ideas between all these different people can be a real challenge. We use lots of different ways to convey the ideas behind our designs, whether it's quick sketches, architectural drawings, engineering blueprints, physical models, digital models, the list goes on. One important tool we use is called a mood board. Its role is to help convey the feeling of a land, to help Imagineers understand what it should look like and feel like, and how guests will react emotionally as they travel through the land. Let's hear a little bit more about what a mood board is and how it's used. When Imagineering sets out to design a new land or a new attraction or a new space, we tend to put together what we call a mood board. A mood board is a way of conveying, how do I want you to feel? Exactly how do I want you to feel? And who else ever in the realm of art history and design has ever tried to accomplish that and how did they do it? We will use anything and everything to communicate an idea from high tech 3D models that you fly around to a scrap of wood I found on the ground that it's just perfect for this and it all goes up there. Anything that will help a person understand what are you getting at? We start to do research in the materials, in the colors. Oh, you use anything, cutouts from a magazine. Some images of how we might want the lighting to look. Pictures of artwork. Some images of some of the buildings. Pictures of ducks and bunnies. Images of some really good rust. Hardware. Vinyl that would go on the seat. The textures. Really unique wall covering. Plaster. Beautiful pictures of bioluminescent coral reefs with coral fish in it. That's not what we're building but it's like what we're building. Then we might do another board that's just about color. How do the colors shift from place to place to place? What are the areas that are warm? What are areas that are cool? What are the areas that are really vibrant and colorful and, and theatrical? We'll uh, have like an image of some of the foods. Maybe there's a great pie shop and those pies look really good, so you stick that on the mood board. So it's two things. Emotionally, how do I want you to feel? And intellectually, what do I want you to know? And how am I taking you through this journey uh, simultaneously as I actually build the thing that I'm really gonna build? Generally, it takes years from the time a land is first being envisioned to opening day when the first guests get to enjoy it. Along the way, projects will often evolve, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. A mood board can be very helpful in making sure that you always stick to the vision, the core theme of your land, and what you want your guests to see, feel, and experience. This business is very different from the private work of a single artist. Everything is negotiated. And so you have to have this very, very open habit of being able to talk to other people about their needs uh, and their desires for the same project and shepherd this project forward, bringing all these people together, flowing in the same direction, but not very rigidly. So the advantage of having these big boards with a, a lot of images on it just put up with push pins is that along the way, every time a, a, you know, a new designer or artist comes to the project, uh, they might bring a new idea and then you can just take the old one off and put the new one on and keep updating it um, as more and more team members get involved. So by the time you're done with this process, very often you have something you could not have predicted at the beginning. But if you've done your job right, it still reflects the intentions that you had at the beginning. Let's just say I was going to do a mood board for Pandora. And I want you to understand this place is strange and new, and this place is not threatening, right? So I'm going to make a bunch of choices about shape language that might lead to a chart of ovals and curves over here. I'm going to express this with egg-like shapes, round shapes, soft shapes. Those are friendlier. And yet at the other side, here are unexpected things, things that are the wrong scale, things that are upside down, 
things that are a color I do not expect, um, details that I don't expect to see. So I'm telling you that it is strange and new, and I'm showing you that it is friendly and approachable. If I was doing a mood board and I was presenting it to somebody and I wanted them to experience taste and sound, I, I would probably DJ my own soundtrack and play it while I'm presenting, and I would likely bring snacks. And sing the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on reaching the end of this lesson on building lands. Now, use this last exercise to create a mood board for your land. Be sure to use as many different materials as you can think of, things like photographs, sketches, magazine clippings, fabric swatches, rocks, tiles, whatever you think will help convey what your guests will see, feel, and experience as they move through your land. After that, be sure to check out the other lessons on your journey through Imagineering in a Box.